Hello and welcome to exercise 4 of the Camunda 8 Code Studio. Now we are talking about automating the process by implementing an actual client. So in the first few exercises we have kind of aligned on the process model you can see right here. And now the next step is to really automate it have an automation for sending kind of messages, making use of service tasks and events to really fully automate this kind of process we do see here in this picture. And of course, to start off with, you can get the BPMN file and the DMN files um, in this repository. Therefore, let's scroll to the top. Um, there you, you do see actually the resource folder click in there and you can find the form, the BPMN and the DMN, um, which is necessary for the deployment. So please go ahead, upload this into the modeler, deploy this, and then you are very well prepared to start off with the automation. So let's check out what the exercise for is all about. Um, in total, it tells us to really automate this process with um, with the three steps which really require the automation. So first of all, we want to notify the person to quarantine. Next up, we want to automate the generation of the certificate of recovery. And last but not least, um, we do need to send the certificate to to our um, yeah patient to our citizen. Um, great. So um, in this exercise, we want to simply visualize or show how to write the glue code. So we are not going to write really some kind of certificate generator. We are just going to show you, or we are just going to write some code which really connects to Camunda 8 and retrieves um, the the task, the job, and puts something in the, the console, something like this. So keep it very simple um, and short, so you do have a feeling of, su of success very fast here. Um, and yeah, so let's continue down there. We do see that we can write this kind of client in multiple languages. So either you choose to now continue with Spring Boot, which is obviously the most popular option. Otherwise you can also take a look on a .NET implementation or a Node.js implementation. And if you have that aligned on one of these programming language, go ahead click on these links and they will lead you to a corresponding um, readme file. So for instance, for the Node.js worker, you can find some information, how to run this right here, what you need to install as a dependency in order to make this work easily for you. And of course, the same applies to the .NET platform, um, Kamuna Platform 8 worker, as well as the um, Java Spring Boot Kamuna Platform 8 worker. In this video, we are now going to focus on how to write a client with the Spring ZB client. So we are utilizing Spring Boot in order to connect to the, to the engine, to ZB, to fetch some jobs and to work on these using Spring. I think that's the most common language and which is also quite easily readable. And of course, the technical concepts shown in there are staying the same across multiple languages. So um, it's always kind of a gRPC connection which is, which is disabled and you just call them um, different API or different methods there. Um, of course, some naming conventions are specific to um, to the, the platform or to the language you're going to choose, but I think overall it's quite, um, quite good for visualization. Cool. Um, to start off with the Spring implementation of the client, we head over to the Spring ZB repository. So that's kind of the dependency we need to, to put into our POM XML, into our project, in order to yeah encapsulate the complex logic which really cares about the gRPC call. So we can just use some predefined methods and predefined classes in order to establish the connection, so on and so forth. So in this repository, which is great, I will link this in the video description down below, as well as all the other repositories to other clients. Um, you can simply see what you need to do in order to really connect to ZB, deploy process model, implement the job workers, 
writing test cases, so on and so forth. So there is a ton of documentation in here, which is usually really valuable. So um, if you want to try it out by yourself, what you actually should do, um, I really can advise you to take a look on that readme right here. Great. So having done so, you should now be aware um, that we are going to use this library. And next up, I'm now going to our transitioning to IntelliJ, where I'm going to show you how the implementation looks like. Having opened up IntelliJ, you can right away see my PonXML file. And I've already added the Spring ZB starter dependency right here, which is very crucial um, for what we want to do in this project. So that's the dependency I've shown you just a minute ago on GitHub. And that's how you would simply add it to a project in Spring Boot. Having done so, we can now continue and take a look on our work application. So that's basically the main class. And in here, of course, we make use of the Spring Boot application. We do need to enable this annotation, enable ZB client. We need to add it to here. And there we can now do various stuff with it. So first of all, I've also defined a logger in order to log stuff into the console, so on and so forth. And the most important thing is that we now do have various methods right here, which all do have the annotation of a ZB worker. And this ZB worker now subscribes to a certain type. So you might remember that we had all these service tasks shown previously in the model and there you can define um, some task type and this type needs to correlate um, all these correlate together so our zb worker right here only fetches tasks with the type of notify person to current time and yeah then we do um, set the auto completion to true we retrieve all the details right here, as you can see, lock something and also fetch and store variables back and forth um, throughout those multiple workers. And having written those three workers for all those three, um, yeah, three tasks we need to automate, we are basically done. And it's not more complicated than that. Another very important thing we need to keep in mind is to actually set um, the application properties in order to really authenticate to the Kamunda 8 SaaS gateway um, or to the against the ZB gateway. And therefore we quickly move to the um, test cluster or to our cluster view we've got here. And in there we can switch to the API top in order to create some client credentials. So once again, I will create them for ZB. So I can simply add some details in here. So let's say it's the dev client um, we want to author here. Um, and yep, I can download the credentials, open them up in a text box, and we are good to go. We can use these secrets and put them into our application YAML or application property file in IntelliJ. So switching back, I do have already created this file. And as you can see, we do have the ZB client cloud, cloud, uh, ZB client, cloud client ID, um, the client secret, the region, so on and so forth. So everything is set in here and this can be then used um, yeah, in order to connect. Great. Having done so, we are basically, we are basically ready to run things. So why not pressing on running this button run worker application so we can see whether the connection um, actually goes the way it should so let's try it out as you can see it started to build and it looks that it's already up and running so maybe i make it a bit bigger here so you can see that it has connected successfully and we are already logging some stuff. So they, they seem to be some um, process instances already um, being activated and we are just fetching them and working on them. So just to show you how to run process instance once again, I'm now going back to our uh, cloud console and we do also need the web modeler, but let me quickly, um, yeah, just go back to our overview right here because somewhere I do have hidden um, to dip, dip. not here somewhere I do have hidden oh yeah the payload to start the process with so 
let's just copy this JSON payload. So we do need to provide a person UID, for instance, call um, an employment category because that's like for the DMN table quite important. And we need to set an age. So just copying this JSON, we can go to the web modeler and now we can start a new instance. So let's do so. Starting a new instance um, should run on our demo cluster. So adding the JSON here, that's already sufficient. And now I can start the instance and right away go to operate in order to view the process instance. Once it has loaded, you can see that the process has started successfully and we're now working for the clerk to check on the infected person. So everything runs as it should run. And now you do see here, there's the initial version of our, um, of our model already up and running. So great. Um, but there's one little extra exercise hidden in here. So if you want to go back to the readme file and there you can see the bonus challenge. So as you see, this went quite smoothly. We were very quickly with it. And now we do have some additional time. And that's the perfect transition to go and do some investigations on the Camunda 8 connectors, which um, provide some reusability for glue code. Um, so maybe clicking on the link, um, we get to the documentation and there you can read uh, some stuff about, about these beloved connectors. Um, so sounds good so far. Maybe let's continue to the web model so I can show you how to add them. Um, and of course, a good way to add them is besides using these message event or message um, tasks or send tasks to rather use something more suitable. So maybe let's go down here. We can see connectors are showing up. Um, why not instead using a centered email connector? That sounds, that sounds pretty okay. And now of course, um, the, the properties do change. So I can now, for instance, create a free account for SendGrid. I need to enter an API key in here, um, the send name, the email address, so on and so forth. And once I filled this out, I should be able to run this process without making actually use of my, my code I've written before. So instead of really making use of our um, worker, for notify the person to quarantine, we are just making use of the connector in order to send out the message. And that's, of course, quite convenient because no code needs to be written. We can do so right away in here. Um, and yeah, um, everyone can do so. So you don't need to be that that technical um, in order to, to get it up and running, which is, of course, great for, for some good prototyping. So worth trying this out as a bonus, but Otherwise, you are good to go and we can continue with the last but not least exercise. So we do have like still um, opened up the exercise five about analyzing the process using Optimize. And that's what will be up in the next session. So stay tuned and see you soon.